Hi and welcome to the CMC Markets Week Monday weekly webinar with myself, market analyst David Madden. Uh, today's date is Monday, the 25th of September, uh, and it is just gone one minute. Uh, it is just gone quarter past 12. As always, with the uh, with the webinar itself, as always, we do have to go through the risk warning si slides. I'll leave them on screen for a couple of sec for a few seconds. You have a quick read through the risk warning slides. Uh, and then I was going to continue on with the webinar. Uh, it's essentially saying it'll keep my compliance department happy. I don't know what it'll basically do, but basically what risk warning says is that anything that we cover in the webinar today should not be construed as explicit investment advice. It is just thoughts and commentary uh, and uh, some personal opinions, but nothing is to be construed as actual uh, explicit investment or trading advice. So now that we've gotten the uh, risk warnings out of the way. We can now actually focus on the webinar itself. Uh, so a quick recap of what we've, what we've seen this morning. Um, actually, oddly enough, um, we've, Germany has actually been the best performer uh, in the major European markets, even though the German election uh, was a bit muddied. Uh, the wars have been politically muddied. Um, Angela Merkel, uh, her, par her party, the Christian Demo Democratic Union, uh, it, it was the largest party. Um, but the share of the vote declined, and it's it's not looking likely that we're going to be having any form of a coalition government formed soon. And if you do have a coalition government, what exactly is that coalition going to look like? Uh, so the lack of kind of political stability uh, from Germany, the strongest and most powerful and most influential country in both the European Union and also the Eurozone, uh, has obviously led to a bit of political uncertainty. But oddly enough, uh, the weak euro has actually and the worse than expected German IFO numbers has actually meant that the German market is actually performing better than the UK and its, uh, and its other major Eurozone counterparts. Not to say that it's particularly strong, it's just holding up fairly well. And all things considered, considering it was a kind of a very kind of middle of the road election, um, there was no kind of, there was, there was um, no kind of uh, clear, clear winner of this, of this, of this election. So therefore, if we do have some coalition formed down the line, it's not particularly likely. It could take several weeks or months of, of horse trading and wrangling, uh, and it's, it's still it's going to be yet, yet to be determined what the coalition is going to look like. So the kind of moves over the weekend. Euro has been weaker because of that. Also, uh, we've seen a bit of uncertainty in Europe as, as a whole. The North Korean situation is still bubbling away in the background. The Spanish market, uh, the IBEX, is, is performing the worst. Uh, we obviously had some turbulence at the back end of last week, and it's continued over to, to this day. Today is Monday. On the Sunday ahead of us, in six days' time, Catalonia uh, is going to be having a, a referendum on independence, on seceding from the rest of Spain. Obviously, we got, there were some, there were, there were some, uh, there were some political scenes of political unrest out of the Catalon, out of the Catalonian region last week, uh, and that, that led to a sell-off in, in the Spanish market, and we're seeing a continuation of that today. Adding to the political mix. Uh, the part of Kurdistan, which is in, inside the sovereign state of Iraq, is, is also holding an independence referendum today. Uh, so that that's gonna that, that, that we could see some extra volatility in the oil market on account of that. Uh, and then also Shinzo Abe, the prime minister of Japan, also announced a snap snap election for ne la, later next month. Um, but by and large, um, there hasn't been a whole lot of moves over the actual. Over the, over the uh, over the past say 72 hours in, in terms of the actual financial market moves, a lot has been going on in, in the political world, but not a whole lot has been going on in the actual financial markets in terms of the size of the moves. Uh, taking a look now, uh, the usual kind of rundown and setup of our of our webinar. We we'll talk about what happened over the weekend. We will have a look at the week ahead. We will go through the major markets. Um, what I'll do is, as always, if, you, if there's any markets that I haven't covered that you would like me to cover, just please stick them in the box when I'm kind of going through the process of going through charts, and I'll happily look look at the, those charts for you. Um, I show it to you every single week, and I continue to show it uh, on our website here uh, under the news and analysis section. is where you can find our we our uh, some of the articles that we post goes on the news and analysis section. I'll show you where the other ones are posted later on. Click on the topic. Third one down, weekly outlook, and I'll give you a breakdown of our weekly outlook. That is posted every single week, talking about the major economic indicators and corporate stories that are on the that are in the pipeline for the next few days. 
Uh, to be perfectly honest, between corporate stories and also between economic data, it isn't the most interesting uh, around. On Thursday, we have US GDP. On Friday, we have UK GDP. Taking a look at the corporate calendar, uh, obviously, if, if you have positions in these stocks, they're of important to you, importance to yourself. But pretty perfectly honest, they're not the most they're not the most popular. Uh, Close Brothers, financial services company in the UK, they have numbers out tomorrow. Uh, Nike have Q1 numbers out uh, from the US tomorrow. Taking a look at, at the, the latter half part of the week, uh, we, we obviously have a number of companies, but Christmas Carillion is going to be the next one to watch out for on Friday. They've been in the news, uh, for, unfortunately, for the wrong reasons in the, uh, in the last number of months. So we could see some volatility out of Carillion on Friday. Uh, taking a look now of the FTSE, I can see now it's just back north of the important 7,300 level. So we start off with the ball rolling. We're talking about uh, we're talking about uh, the FTSE 100. So it's I mentioned how it's how we kind of commented on how it's back north of 7,300, and the importance for that is because if you look here from say late June uh, through well until September, we saw a lot of kind of you know, a lot of support found in around that region, from 7,300 down to around 7,288. Quite a bit, quite a decent uh, support level in this region. Crash through um, last. Uh, Two, two Fridays ago, and it's been making its way higher since. So we've just managed to kind of eke north of the 7,300 level. If you continue to push higher, and notice how negative momentum is declining, so it could be a sign that things are kind of changing around. Uh, if you do continue to push higher, I mean, hold north of 7,300, uh, that the, kind of the, the, the next hurdle potentially beyond that will be the 200 day moving average, uh, which, comes into, which comes into play at 7,327. And then north of that, we could be looking towards, we could find some potentially find some resistance, 7,389, which is the 50-day moving average. Notice how we saw, and also with the 100-day moving average, at 7,418. Notice how we did see a bit of consolidation in around this area. So the, 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 these metrics have, have uh, on occasion, acted as a resistance and also support in the past. So potentially, if we're if pushing higher, this could be the next region we will be looking towards. Should we kind of move lower and kind of continue in the kind of downward trend that, we, that we've been in recently on the FTSE, we'll be looking back towards Friday's low at 7,233. And then south of that, we will, we'll be looking back to two Fridays ago at 7,195. And if you break that, Seeing as that, that, that was already a multi-month low, should we go south of 7,195, the next part, potentially big level to watch out for will be the April low at 7,088. Taking a look now at the German market. So the German, basically, essentially for the last couple of weeks, the, market, the German market has broke out of this, this kind of negative, kind of downward Kind of uh, channel that has been in smash out of that with well, well, easily exceeded the 50 day moving average, exceeded the 100 day moving average. But now, the last five or six trading sessions, it's been some you know, occasionally gaining ground. But notice how positive momentum is slipping. So, it kind of suggests that the kind of positive sentiment that we do have and the kind of the eagerness of the bulls is sort of running out of steam somewhat. Um, so levels to kind of watch out for on the Germany 30 on the DAX. If if we do break north of this 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 price here, uh, but the kind of this the uh, the high of July at uh, 12,678, then potentially the next level to watch out for will be 12,840. But if we do manage to kind of pull back and as I said, buying momentum has been sliding recently, so we could see a bit of a pullback. Should we should we see a downward move? In the DAX, we could potentially find support at the 100 day moving average at 12,466. Notice how it acted as support here uh, while the market was falling, and then it made a clear, decisive break north of it when, when the market was rising. So we could potentially see some support in that, in that area here, 12,466. And should we move south of that, we could be looking back down towards the lows here at 12,333. And then down to the 50 day moving average at 12,276. 
just now uh, I was have a quick look at the Swiss market and I'll be perfectly honest with you it's not a market I, uh, I kind of monitor closely but I will be sure to uh, to give it a look over now So this is a monthly chart, so this is a very much kind of big picture what we're looking at here. This is the post-credit crisis move, and broadly speaking, along with global equities, from 2009, largely, broadly speaking, the market has been pushing higher. This is, if I'm looking at a, at a chart, I always like to look at the kind of the furthest out, the kind of top-down analysis, as it's called, looking for the big picture and then kind of working your way in. So what, what we can kind of glean here from this, broadly speaking, from 2009 onwards, along with a lot of actually in, indices around around the world, broadly speaking, pushing higher. Um, and then taking a look now, uh, notice how also the kind of monthly momentum is, is, is quite strong as well. So we're going to are seeing positive, broadly speaking, a positive move for the uh, for the Swiss the Swiss market, as you can see here over this over. Most global markets did have a bit of a side or a downside move throughout 2016, only to kind of then uh, push higher yet again. Uh, taking a look now, kind of, kind of my kind of my kind of preferred chart really would be uh, the daily chart. Big picture, tell you know what we can see here in line with the kind of weekly chart and also the monthly chart is that the market is pushing higher. Uh, what we can see here is that we've been sort of range bound uh, ever since it kind of took to, uh, went north of 8,800. It's been sort of, you know, cap between 9,200 to the top, 8,800 to the bottom. These would be obviously these would be potentially big levels to watch, to, to watch out for should we break uh, north or south of of, uh, of that particular range. We're at the top end of the range now, so we, what we could potentially see is we may see some selling pressure come in as if and when we approach 9,200. But if uh, but given that we we can see the market's been moving higher over the last few weeks. Uh, as you can see here, positive momentum is still quite strong. Uh, so, so if we do happen to break out to the north uh, of the kind of that, that's called that 9,200, potentially we could then be looking up towards 9,400 and then potentially 9,600. On the downside, should we break uh, break break below this area? Well, I said 8,800, but to be probably be a bit more exact, you may want to kind of look at this level here. Which was the August low at 8,800, sorry, 8,725. Also, notice how it's not too far away from the 200 day moving average. And if you look at this market here, the 200 day moving average uh, did provide a bit of support back in December 2016. So it goes, it goes to show you how strong the market is if, for basically all of 2017, uh, the Swiss 20, 200 has been north or two. two 20 rather has been north of the 20 moving average so if you do see moves lower in the, uh, in, in the Swiss market we could potentially see some buying come into play uh, in around the 100 day moving average at just shy of 9,000 and then south of that I see as there's been a sort of a range between say 8,800 uh, and we call it and 8,725 if we go south of that we'd obviously be taking it to a multi-month low and then that's something you actually uh, potentially could be concerned about. A break below the 30 moving average could send us back to this price here, um, the, the low from, from April at 8,500. Let's go back now. So turning our attention now, so we've, we've covered the European markets, turning our attention now to the fairly strong, uh, broadly speaking, bullish US markets. Um, we have seen a bit of a pullback uh, in the Dow Jones in the US 30. Um, it's, the trend is very much uh, is very much to the upside, um, and buying buying the dips has been a popular strategy with, with some traders over the last number of months. Um, should we see any pullbacks in the Dow, we could potentially find support at 22,669. Uh, 22, South of that, potentially at 22,180, and then below that again. Potentially in a 20,058. Now, as the market is coming off here ever so slightly, 
uh, we also are seeing a bit of a cooling in positive in positive momentum so given that the price is edging lower and positive momentum is coming off you know they're both kind of moving in the same direction so we could potentially see a bit of a uh, a wider or deeper retracement than we have seen recently uh, in, in some of the as opposed to some of the moves while the market was pushing higher and then to the upside should we resume the kind of the, the kind of fairly bullish uh, trend that has been in the last number of months traders are looking towards the kind of big figures uh, 22,500 600 700 and so on it is a fairly looking similar chart when we talk about the S&P 500 uh, you know record highs followed by a few kind of pullbacks and a bit of a cooling of positive momentum so very obviously you know you can see that it's pushing higher uh, we have seen a bit of a cooling in the last couple uh, in the last few trading sessions we've seen a kind of the uh, we've seen the market come up ever so slightly and this is a good example of why I like to look at momentum indicators so as the market was going on here this point onwards here creating fresh record highs you could see the positive the, the momentum indicator putting that momentum positive momentum is increasing so you can kind of be more confident that, that the trend uh, is, uh, is is going to last because the price is moving higher at the same time the rate of uh, increase in momentum is the rate of in, the rate of the buying is also increasing but notice how we see the price cooling off and we also see a cooling off in positive momentum so we could potentially see a bit of a move lower in the S&P 500 and areas to potentially watch out for for support in uh, 2488 and then south of that 2480 and then if we do see a further pullback it might be down towards the 50 day moving average at 2470. Similar view though the big picture is that the markets uh, the S&P is quite strong so it's, it's, it's possibly more likely that we could see a continuation of record highs being set because as I mentioned buying, buying on the dips has been something of an issue I do appear to be having uh, I'm not sure if you guys can still hear me or not we do are having unfortunately having some issues here would you mind please typing in the box if you can hear me can you hear me Can everyone hear me? Is everything going okay? We just had some. We had some technical. You can hear me. Excellent. We had some technical issues. Uh, just sit tight. Unfortunately, we just had some technical issues, and the system logged myself out. Uh, it's to do with the internet in the overall office. It's on our end. Um, um, uh, not on your end. I do apologize. Can everyone? Can you see the screen? Okay. Apologies for that. We just had some technical issues uh, on our side. It was to do with the overall the kind of the network in our in our office disappeared to kind of had a slight wobble there. But I'm seeing signs that things are back to normal. If everyone can see and hear me, and would you mind please just typing in the box because I don't want to be leaving anyone behind when we proceed with the webinar because it does appear that things are back to normal I'll just put the uh, yes oh excellent so it appears that it's only a minor disruption uh, I was just talking about the S&P 500 should bring up my watch list and I'll be back on track with the webinar I'll pick up where I left off I, I believe I was saying that uh, we have seen some buying on, buying on the pullbacks has been a popular strategy by some traders uh, for the S&P 500 in recent weeks. Seeing as it's been good, we kind of could, we've seen a lot of new record highs being kind of uh, notched up as uh, often on a uh, daily back to back day day to day basis. So uh, as I mentioned, we have seen a bit of a cooling in, in buying pressure, but that that may that may, that may potentially uh, attract some buyers to enter the fold. Uh, looking to looking to the upside, we be looking towards 2510, 2520, and, and 1340, and so on. Because the big picture for the S&P has been has been has been very bullish. We've seen a lot of record highs recently, and we're not seeing any kind of indication that the buying momentum 
that that we're not seeing any kind of signs of a of a kind of a major reversal uh, on the horizon. Well, uh, seeing as as a, as you can, conversely we're talking about the price of gold, uh, gold has been broadly speaking uh, in, a, in a downward trend for the last couple of weeks. Uh, well, for over two weeks now because it was two Fridays ago. Gold hit at that 13 month high, and then ever since then it has been giving up the ground. Uh, and notice how the price of gold sold off quite aggressively. We had the Fed Fed recent Fed meeting here on the Wednesday. The Federal Reserve uh, still pointing towards a rate hike in December. Whether the market believes that or not is another thing. Uh, they raised their growth forecast, but they also lowered their inflation uh, forecast. And what we've seen here on the back of that continued downward, downward selling of gold. But notice how we, we, we've been seen to be kind of resting in around the 50-day moving average. Um, and so this is potentially going to now be a, an important level to watch out for the price of gold. It is worth noting that we had, we had sort of what's called kind of inside days, whereby after this, after this large move lower on Thursday, the move we saw on Friday remained within the range of the previous day. And also, we can see a similar move here We're on, on well, today's day. It's not over yet, but so far, we on one hand, we haven't taken out the highs of Friday or, thir or Thursday, but at the same time, we haven't taken out the lows of Friday. So we're still above the low of last week. Uh, and now that, now that we're, we're seeing it, the market hovering around the 50-day moving average, which is in around 1288, 1290 region, we could potentially see uh, some, some some buyers uh, enter the fold in around here. Notice how, as the price was pushing lower, we saw positive momentum decline, then it swung negative, and it's still very much in the negative side. But we're just not. It's almost like the rate. Um, of change of selling pressure is remained unchanged because it's it reached this quite high level here and hasn't really increased or decreased beyond that. So who knows? We could see a fresh bout of selling and we could smash through the 50-day moving average and that may be reflected by a ramp up in negative momentum or potentially, as we often see here, in looking at previous examples, whereby there's a gradual increase followed by a gradual deep decrease and that is reflected by a turnaround in the price. So something to watch out for on gold. Should we move south of the 50-day moving average, which is in around the kind of 1290 region? Next potential level, maybe for support, could be in here at this all at this pullback here in August at 1276, and then south of that at the at the 100-day moving average at 1269. Notice how we saw kind of an overlapping of the of the 50-day moving average and the 100-day moving average in price of gold in early August. And what do we have here? They were acting in around. Apologies for that. They were acting to provide a bit of support for the metal. So these areas are, as they have a bit of form in the path, as, as you would say, uh, of acting as support. We could see them acting as support potentially in the future or, the, or for the 50 day moving average at the present. A move south of the, of the 100 day moving average at 1269 could, would, would be something to be concerned about. And that could be an indication that we, we would potentially on track to the 30 day moving average at 1245. But if you do see more buyers enter the fold here, and if you do get a break north of 1300, next level to watch out for potentially to the upside 1360, 1334, and 1358. 1358 was a 13 month high, and then north of that will be the next potential level of, of resistance. Could be a 1375, which was the 2016 high. And then a break north of 3075 may then bring the psychologically important 1400 level into play. As I mentioned about the Turkish, sorry, apologies, Kurdish region of Iraq is having as a, a, a referendum on independence today. Uh, what we're seeing, as I mentioned, we could see some uh, some volatility in, in the oil market on the back of that. Both Brent and WTI are higher on the day. Actually, in terms of Kind of the, the, the in terms of the geography, the issue is Iraq is obviously a major oil producing country, and 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 the relatively large amount of the oil is in the northern part of, of the sovereign state of Iraq, which comes in, which is also in the kind of Venn diagram, if you will, of the Kurdish, uh, of the Kurdish nation. And if the Kurdish part section of Iraq tend, looks to secede from the rest of Iraq, we could see political upheaval, we could see disruption to production of oil. Hence why we're seeing 
higher prices in, uh, in both oil contracts. Notice how we've been in a fairly clear and concise upper trend for Brent uh, since basically the end of June, pushing higher on Brent. We've even actually managed to actually trade only in, in the last few minutes because I put this this, um, this line here on a few minutes before the webinar began. We even actually managed to trade ever so slightly north uh, at, uh, of, of this line here. So it looks like we've actually, for, for the price of for the price of Brent, it would appear that we've created a new high for 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 Brent oil for the for the year for the year to date for 2017. So the bullish uh, the the momentum is, is is clearly with the bulls and sh and should we kind of continue to kind of break north of this line here at a third at, at this price action here of um of the, this this price here which comes in, which which is in a price action of apologies for that at 57 and 79 73 cents should we break north of i should make a decisive break north of that 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 level and then may potentially come support uh for 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 for, for um, uh, going forward and like levels to watch out for beyond that will be 58 dollars a barrel 59 dollars a barrel and 6 dollars a barrel because bearing in mind when we get to the kind of 58 to 60 dollar region in the price of oil it takes us back to a time when oil was moving quite fast uh, around then if you, if you recall here in the kind of um, in the kind of mid 2015 era uh, we, we saw a lot of quite an a fast sell off the price of oil so there wasn't really a whole lot of levels uh, to watch out for on the downside because it's quite frankly moved so quickly just to, just, just to reiterate should you make a decisive break north of where we are in around here if you go north of 58 dollars the, the next potentially kind of big levels to watch out for brent um, might be in at 59 dollars and 60 dollars per barrel it's a similar looking chart but not quite the same for uh the price of wti it hasn't hasn't had it hasn't had the kind of quite uh as the same kind of bullish uptake that that brent has had disruption caused by a couple of hurricanes in the united states knocked out the capacity and operation ability at refineries in the US and effectively demand as this hasn't really been as strong since. Conversely, with capacity being knocked out and operation in the United States, all of a sudden that makes Brent all the more attractive uh, for, for, for people in the rest of the world. So therefore you have the kind of disparity between the two where Brent becomes more in demand and WTI is less in demand, so hence the widening of the prices. But nonetheless, broadly speaking, Price of WTI has been pushing higher. As you can see today, we're, we're trading at the highest level I've not seen since late May in WTI. Should we continue on uh, in the kind of upper trend that we've been in, of, of broadly speaking, for, for a number of months, but kind of more re realistically speaking, for about three or four weeks? If you continue on pushing higher here, uh, potentially the next level of resistance might come into play at the May high of $51.66, and then north of that. Uh, traders might be looking towards the April high of $53.56. Move to the downside in WTI may find support in around here in the 2 day moving average at $49.30. Notice how it acted as a bit of support here um, in the early part in the kind of middle of September and then south of that potentially potential support coming into play at a 50 day moving average at $48.30. Just move on to a few, a few of the major currency pairs now, uh, and then I'll be looking to wrap up the, the webinar itself. Having a look now at the euro dollar. The euro dollar has been holding up, but um, well, but it's been fairly considering the moves that we had in the, in the summertime. It's been a bit a bit more on the, on the on the kind of quieter side in terms of the ranges we've seen on on the on the euro dollar. We have seen a bit of a, a, a bit of a retreat uh, in, in the price, and also kind of mirrored by the fact that we've actually seen a slight increase in negative momentum. So we, we could potentially see further uh, losses for the single currency versus the greenback. And if and if we do put a push lower on that particular currency pair, we could be looking back towards this price, this this uh, low here from the money from, only from last week at one eight one eighteen thirty seven. And then south of that, we could, we could see retracing back to the 50-day moving average 
uh, which comes into place in around the kind of 118.24 region. And then south of that again, back towards 117.08. These are kind of areas we, we, because the, the, the single currency has, it hasn't really made much ground versus the uh, versus the, the green back ever since going on to print that uh, after having quite a, quite a stellar run, stellar run uh, to the month of September. But we've been kind of broadly speaking pushing kind of sideways, but kind of sideways with kind of a bit of a bias towards the downside on that. It a move we would. We would potentially, you know, you would like to see a move north on the 120 region before you can actually, you know, potentially look to kind of maybe see another kind of uh, uh, another attack, potential attack on the 120.92 region and then up towards 121 and 120. Bearing in mind, we actually have Mario Draghi, the head of the ECB, speaking at, uh, at half two London time, so not too far away at all, maybe uh, in just under just under two hours time. Taking a look now uh, at the British pound versus the US dollar, the old cable chart. Cable has been fairly range bound. Uh, it's, been, it's been fairly, the last few trading sessions have been fairly quiet, sort of 130, nearly 136 at the upside and 134, kind of 50 ish to the downside. Um, we would like to see kind of a move. A break either either direction out of that, uh, and given that while the, the price was clearly ratcheting up here, and was reflected in a fairly decent ratchet up also in positive momentum. Um, this is this is sort of a uh, sort of a good example of why I like to look at the momentum indicator, whereby if you see divergence between the two, whereby the price is moving one direction and the, and the momentum is moving another, or there are signs of momentum is starting to pull away from the same direction the price was in. That could be an early, an early warning sign potentially. So as the price is pushing higher, we're seeing momentum push higher. But then the, the cable went on to print a, a new higher high here. But at the same time, the momentum was distinctively lower. So that could be a sign that the prices are creating new highs, but we're not, those aren't reflected in new highs for the momentum, it could be an indication that okay, that maybe maybe the, the, the buying pressure or the or the kind of energy that the bulls have is kind of running out of steam a bit. I noticed how we've been kind of declining in the terms of positive momentum. That being said, the price has been fairly range bound. It's sort of 136 in the top, but well, about 134.50 to the bottom. So a break a break to the downside could see us return back towards 134, and then if you if you go through 134. We could be looking back towards 132.67, and then south of that, we could be looking towards 131.64. As I mentioned, a break north of 136 kind of put us back up to looking towards 136.59, and then north of that, turns looking towards 137.138, and then at that point, we'd, we'd be back in the process of creating uh, multi month highs and even taking our chart back further afield. You could see here that we haven't actually had pound at versus the British dollar at that level since actually uh, the EU referendum, uh, the UK's um, EU re referendum night. So that give indication of kind of how far back we are talking about. Looking now at the pound, the euro versus the pound. Not too dissimilar that we are seeing a bit of a, a bit of kind of sideways or kind of range bound trading. So obviously we had a kind of quite a aggressive push higher, followed by a fairly a fairly decent pullback. Whether this is going to be a pullback and a resumption of the wider trend, or whether this is going to be something something larger, has yet to be seen. Uh, pushing lower, as you can see here, as the price was coming off, we we as the image uh, we can saw we, we saw a fairly inc fairly increase. A fairly sizable increase in the rate of negative momentum, and then we notice how the price is sort of kind of hanging in around the kind of 89 down to around the kind of 89 back down towards the kind of 88 region here, sort of almost like trapped in the, in the kind of 100 point range. We are seeing a cooling of the of the of the negative momentum, so the kind of selling pressure is is coming to a decline. Whether the whether this is going to be just an I a correction in a wider upward trend or whether there's going to be something larger 
has yet, yet to be seen. But for the time being, we seem to be range bound on this currency pair. It can't really kind of break north of the one or day moving average at 88.77. North of that, we're looking towards 89. And then if, it, if, if we have a decisive move to 89, we can then be looking towards, you know, the kind of psychological 90 cent level. And then north of that, the 50 day moving average uh, at, at 1936. Should we kind of should we kind of move for continuing in the, in the downward trend that we've been in for the past number of weeks? Uh, with potentially looking back towards the 100 day moving average uh, at this price here at 87.18. And then south of that, we're looking back towards 87 itself and then back down towards 86. The dollar yen uh, has made has made quite the comeback uh, in only uh, well in only actually in, in the space of about uh, in the space of a, a space of a couple of weeks uh, we obviously had quite a fairly gradual decline here creation of lower lows and lower highs from from July from early July mid July not to kind of mid mid September and then very quickly take off take off this high here take off this high here take off this high here so we're pushing higher move north of the of the two day moving average but. You know, only kind of just and it's been kind of hanging in around that area ever since. Notice how the kind of positive momentum had ramped up or we're seeing a slight kind of cooling of it. So we, we kind of we've seen this move before as it were, whereby there's quite a decent in increase in momentum as the market's moving in a certain direction, in this case pushing higher, but then it's like we are seeing the potential signs that the bulls are, are being stalled a bit. So what, what if we can hang north if you can remain north of the two day moving average which is in around the kind of 112 20 region or pretty much in around the kind of price action that we're at now we could potentially see push higher towards 113 uh if another potential area for resistance could be in at 113.57 and then it can, what would be a big what would be potentially be a significant level to watch out for would be 114.49 so because it's sort of it was the july high and it was sort of you could you could you could, you could kind of uh look towards it kind of a, a potential uh, also you can also kind of say that it's not too far away from the uh, from the bay high on top of that. Move to the downside if it can't if it can if it slips back below the 200 day moving average, we could see a return potentially back to the 100 day moving average. It did provide support and only only a few days ago at the 100 day moving average at 111 spot one, spot 11, and then south of that and back down towards 110. And if you can do continue if you go south of 110, that could be the indication that the kind of wider downward trend that that has been in. At well, largely speaking, throughout 2017 is still uh, in, intact. And if should we move south of the 110, we'll be looking back towards 109 and then potentially back towards 107.32. Just before uh, I finish up, what I quickly do, as always, show on our website um, where we have a, a various different things you may find of interest. So we have a chart forum here. Uh, chart forum, if you go to the trading pulse and the third option down, chart forum. What we'll do is write a, write a few other characters and, and snap on a picture of a chart and just kind of do kind of very much to the point potential levels uh, and possibly some kind of commentary on, on what um, the kind of the, the market has been doing. So just keep an eye off. They're updated on a daily basis. What's also updated on a daily basis throughout the day is the insights. Uh, as you mentioned at the top of the webinar, some of the news and analysis we, we post gets, gets posted to the website. Other bits get gets posted onto Insight inside the trading platform. So to, to find the Insight, click on the Market Pulse, and then it's the second option down. So it talks about um, some of the articles we, we post, and also some of the economic announcements that happen throughout the day can also get uploaded to the Insight section. Lastly, um, I just want to be keep you informed of future webinars so obviously our one is on every single monday at 12 every monday trade every when the market when the, that's not a bank holiday in the uk um every single every monday at uh, 12 15 but we also have a couple of other web webinars on the go as well so later tonight uh, at 1900 hours 7 p.m london time we have the trader development program part four so feel free to sign up for that and on Wednesday at 19.30 for the summertime, 7.30 p.m. London time, uh, we have the uh, another webinar. Uh, this one, that was called the the Trading Mind, uh, How Traders Do It Differently. And then, of course, 
fact, uh, I'll be I'll be here, uh, and hopefully so will you uh, next Monday at 12:15. Uh, once again, I do apologise for the minor technical issue we had in the middle of the webinar. Uh, I thank you for your patience uh, and have a good trading week. Thank you very much.